Good morning, church. How's everyone doing this evening? I would like to say good morning to each and every one of you. Good morning, church. Good morning, our visitors. You know, it is an honor and a privilege to be able to come before you this morning to talk to you for a brief moment about how good God has been to us. We are gathered this morning on the Zoom platform to worship our God in spirit and truth. The Bible says that those who worship God must worship him in spirit and truth. And what that means is that we need to clear our minds of the things that might prohibit us from focusing on God and what he wants us to do in our worship. Our focus is singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Our focus is to remember the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ by participating in the communion. Our focus is also remembering uh, our responsibility to give back to God that we have, as we prosper. Remember, just because we're not in the building don't mean that we should stop giving. Our focus is on preaching and teaching the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And our focus is in fellowshipping. Our fellowship is in our separate home, but we are together as one body. It might be the Zoom platform that we are performing on, but God knows our hearts and he knows that we are one body, but in many different places. Just like God is in heaven, he's directed all the, the churches of Christ in their location where we are being directed in this Zoom platform under the guidance of of what we are participating in, the things that I had mentioned earlier. You know, it would be great to be back in the building. You know, I must admit that it's, it's a place where we can greet and meet each other and we can be more comfortable uh, with each other. Hugs, we can't do that anymore, sorry. You know, you know, some of us like to kiss and do all that stuff like that, but we are on this platform and we're virtually connected, or we're connected as one body. You know, let us pray for a moment, and I'm going to set up this program. But Heavenly Father, we thank you for being the great God that you are and for allowing us to be one in your body. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you will be with us as we go into this worship service, that we might have the things that uh, we need to uh, do in our lives. We pray that you will comfort those that might not feel as good as they would like to feel. But we know that you are capable of blessing them to be able to feel better and to be able to um, get through this worship service and, 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 and be at peace. We just pray, God, that you will just be with us and comfort us. This is our prayer in Jesus Christ's name. Let us all say amen. So. I'm going to read this scripture reading that was read this morning. It's taken from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16 to 18. And it says, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. I am thankful and glad that the Lord has blessed each and every one of us to wake up this morning, because he didn't have to wake us up. Many lives were lost last night. Some people went to sleep last night and didn't wake up this morning. We know some people woke up this morning but will pass away today or tonight. The sad thing about it is that that scenario will go on tomorrow. It'll go on Tuesday and will we'll go on Wednesday and it will we'll go on Thursday and it will go on Friday and Saturday, and again and again, it will repeat itself. A lot, of loss has, a lot of lives have been lost from the virus, but death has a way of just keep repeating itself. This particular time, death with this pandemic is just staggering numbers. We need to remember that God is actually in control of our life, and we can rejoice in him, we can pray with him, and we can praise him, and we can give thanks in everything that we do because of who he is and what he has done for us in our personal life. We know that, that, uh, that this pandemic is a problem with all of us. We know that, that a lot of things that happen and, and that's taking our hearts and making us feel sad is just tough situation. You know, I am 
tired of being sheltered in place. And I am tired of wearing masks. And I am tired of seeing other people wear masks. What would Jesus do? Your beliefs don't make a person better, but you just throw on the slide, but your beliefs don't make a person better, but your behavior does. Think what Jesus would do. What would Jesus do will not always bring a popular response. What would Jesus do? I know what Jesus would say. Use wisdom in your decisions. Everything that you do, use wisdom. Pray to God and he will give you understanding. I know he would say, love your neighbors as you would love yourself. What did Jesus do on the cross? He sacrificed for everybody. Sacrificed for everybody. Brothers and sisters, I'm tired of hearing about the unemployment and the numbers are going up. I'm tired of hearing about the disconnect in the political arena. And I'm tired of hearing about the uncertainties of the stock market and the worldly events that's happening on the hatred and all the things that's pertaining to life and all the things that's being exposed. Brothers and sisters, I'm tired of things that are disrupting our lives in such a way that, you know, it's just unbearable sometimes, but we know that we should never give up. We should always try and rely on the Lord to help us do those things that, that all might cause us problems and get us off track. Brothers and sisters, I know that there are things in, in your life that you're tired of just like me and we can just talk and go on and on and on about those things that might have bearings in our life. All the problems, the tribulations, the sickness that we might have, the people that we know that are sick, and all these things. But the important thing that we must remember is to pray to God and to ask God for wisdom and understanding. We know that God won't give us more than what we can handle. If you want to put a title on this lesson that I'm telling or just discussing, I'm, I'm playing, saying this morning would be, what is the will of God for you? What is the will of God for you? God's will for you is to rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and in everything give thanks. This is the will of God for you in Christ. That was taken from 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 and 18. God's will for you is to rejoice in the Lord always. And the Bible said again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men, and the Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything in prayer and supplication, give with thanksgiving, let your request be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ, O Lord. Philippians chapter 4, verse 4 through 7. See, God's understanding will surpass our understanding. We can't begin to understand God's power and how he understands and how he can help us in our understanding of who he is and how he can guide us and how we can lean on each other to get the understanding that we need to hold on to his unchanging hand. God's will for you is to trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will set your path straight. There's a lot of paths in this world that are going crooked, that are going off the road that's going off, they would say, off the grid. God says, stay on the road that will lead you to life and godliness. The will of uh, God's will for you says, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of the sinners, nor sit in the seats of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and he meditates night and day. And he shall be like a tree planted by rivers of water that bring forth fruit in his season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. Psalms 1, 1 to 3. I want to be that 
I want to be like that tree planted by the streams of water, but it's the living water of, of Christ that we drink from. So living water of Christ that we get our nourishment, and we'll be like that tree, strong, getting the nourishment that we need as we go through this life. And it says that everything that we would do, and that's according to God's will, we will prosper. That's a great feeling. Amen. Amen. Somebody needs to say amen on that. God's will for you is to ask for wisdom and instructions. It says to perceive words of understanding, to receive instructions of wisdom, justice, judgment, and equity, to the poor, to the simple, and to the young man, knowledge and discretion. A wise man will hear and increase his learning, and a man of understanding will obtain wise counsel. To understand proverbs and enigma, the words of the wise and the riddles, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise instruction. That is found in Proverbs chapter 1, verse 1 through 7. It is in very important that we get the instruction and wisdom from our God. It is very important that we understand those instructions that we get, carry them out. It is important that we use God's counsel, that God's words that we use. But he says that the wise they are fools, they won't take heed to what he says. If God calls you a fool, like it says in this, guess what? You're a fool. You don't follow his instructions. Brothers and sisters, we are experiencing various trials in our life. Book in James, it says, we can profit from our trials. He says, brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. We know that testing of your faith produce patience, but let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. If you lack wisdom, let him ask God, who, is, who gives all liberty and without reproach, and it will be given to him. Let him who acts in faith, not doubting, for he who doubts is like the waves of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind, for he will he is not man, I'm sorry, he, for he, excuse me, I'm, for let not the man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is double-minded and unstable. So we need to ask him for the wisdom and guidance in our life. James chapter 1, verse 2 to 7. Read that at your time and, and, and get the meaning out of that. For God's will for you is to have faith. The Bible says, so faith come by here and hearing by the word of God, Romans chapter 10, verse 17. Faith is confident expectation, not no guess, not no hope, but it's confident. It's confident of God. So God's will for you is to have full acceptance of the gospel of Jesus Christ, beliefs in the facts, committed to its principles, trust in God and acknowledgement of his authority confidence in his promises and obedience to his commands. Obedience is the key to the whole thing. Brothers and sisters, the Bible presents faith as something you do. It's something that you work at. It's a process in developing a relationship. It's the same thing like marriage. Marriage, you work at it and you work at it. It's in faith, you work at it also. Marriage without work is dead. The Bible says faith without work is dead also. So it's a process. We need to remember that it's a process that we go through. The Bible says that for the will of God for you is to be diligent, to present yourself approved to God. A workman need not be ashamed, but rightly divide the word of truth. You can see that in 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 15. Brothers and sisters, there are people who are not members of the, the body of Christ. If you're not a member of the body of Christ, you need to obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. That is the will for you. You are supposed to hear the word. You are to believe it. You are to repent of your sins, confess Jesus is Lord, be baptized for the forgiveness of your sins, and then be faithful to God for the rest of your life. 
The Bible says in, in Matthew chapter 28, Jesus had died on the cross and he was buried and he rose again on the third day. We are he said that he, he went before his disciples and said, all authority has been given to me in heaven and earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the very end of the age. Amen. Matthew chapter 28, and verse 18 to 20. So God's will for an unbeliever is that you become a disciple of his son, Jesus Christ. Jesus told his disciples to make disciples, which is found in Matthew chapter 20, verse 19. A disciple is a learner, a follower. A disciple is one who desires to become like his teacher, Luke chapter 6 and verse 40. We follow the teaching of Jesus Christ, God's son. It's very important that we understand who we follow and who we stand by and, and who's direct on our path in our life, Jesus Christ. Why does Jesus want you to be a disciple? Well, one thing he says, come unto me all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you should find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 to 30. Jesus clearly wants you to be a disciple to learn of him, he will give you rest for your souls and he will take the burden of sin away. He will also lighten your load. It's very important that we give everything to Jesus because he is big enough, strong enough, willing and capable enough to hold all our problems, worry, and everything that we struggle with in life. Give it all to Jesus. That's what we need to do. Give it all to Jesus. God's will for us Point, point, is pointed out by the Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 5, verse 1 through 5. And it says, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, to whom also we have access by faith into this place which we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulations produce perseverance, and perseverance character, and character hope. Hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who God has given us. We don't never give up on hope. We don't never give up on God because he says that he gives us strength. He gives us this hope. He gives us this endurance. He gives us this patience. He gives us everything that we need to carry on. We might struggle in our lives. We might have different problems, but God will give us the strength. He gives us a heart for him to declare his word. And we need to help our brothers and sisters as they're in time of need, and as they struggle, and as we all struggle together. But we know as one group, one body, that God has a way of pulling us through everything that we are facing in our lives. So it's important that we know that. We know that we are justified and we have peace with God through Jesus Christ, we're justified by faith. That faith, that confident expectation that God will hold up his promise. He will hold up things that are pertaining to our life and our salvation. So God's will for us is to know what, like Simon Peter says. He says, Simon Peter, a bond servant and apostle of Jesus Christ. He said, to those who obtain like precious faith with us by the righteousness of God and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. As his divine power has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world. Thus, that's taken from 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 4. It is important to know that God has given us everything that pertains to life and godliness. We can go to him, we can go to the scriptures and know what God wants to do. God's 
word is the book, the Bible. And the, the Bible is God's word distribute or, or for man to understand his nature, his character, and what he wants us to do in our life. The conclusion of this lesson is God's will for you is to hold on to his unchanging hands. God's will for you is to hold on to his unchanging hands. And the Bible says, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks, for this is the will of God and Jesus for you, Jesus Christ. Thank you, brothers, for your attention that you have uh, heard about my lesson. I pray that it has been something that was said to you that might encourage you to hold on to God's unchanging hands. And we pray that, that he will bless your lives and he will carry you through all the things that you might be facing in your life. I had read some passages in the Bible and it was talking about being a disciple of Jesus Christ. If you're not a disciple of Jesus, you have an opportunity to be one. And that is hearing the word, believing, repenting and confessing of your sins. And then you can be buried in water baptism and have all your sins washed away. That's what scripture says. In, in Acts chapter, chapter 2, verse 38, we can see that on the day of Pentecost, 3,000 souls was baptized. They heard the message, they believed it, and they confessed, and they was baptized. It is a pleasure to come before you this morning to make your request known. If you want to be baptized or if you have prayer requests, make it to known to us, and we will. We will cater to your needs as we sing the invitation song. Thank you for your attention, and may God bless in each one of you and hold on to God's unchanging hands. Keep us in prayer, brothers and sisters.